iPad for summer learning because it's really, really hard. I use my iPod Touch for summer learning because it's small and it's easy to carry around so I can play it on on vacation when, when there's no internet because my apps don't need the internet to play on, on vacation. During the summer, I like to use my iPad thing to play educational games like a statue where I can have a good program, Kindle where I can read books, and Sushi Monster where I can learn my multiplication facts. There's an app called Spelling Star. I really like it because it makes it more fun, but my mom tries to make it fun by pulling out the whiteboard, but that's not that fun either. So my mom bought this this app at the app store. It's called Spelling Star. And first you say the word, and then you try to spell it. It's like the, because every week I have to give a spelling test. I don't like studying for it. So it's fun in this way. You say a sentence for the word, and then you try to spell it. It's kind of hard to do pencil and paper because you have to use a pencil and everything and paper, and so it makes it a little bit more complicated, but sometimes it gives you hints, like in the paper it won't give you a hint, but sometimes in these learning games it gives you hints, so it's easier, and you can start over and you don't do all that erasing, which messes up your paper a lot. Join us for our first live Q&A on Google Plus at 7.30 Central Standard Good, uh, good evening, everyone. We are so excited to have you with us, and we are just going to get started. Um, I wanted to share with you just a couple of ways that you can um, post your questions, because this is our very first live um, Q&A, um, and for some of you, it might be your first experience with a Google Hangout. Um, you might have joined us from our Google Plus page. Uh, you can also join us from a YouTube page. Um, so we will be um, sharing out this link after um, our broadcast today, and so you could watch the recorded version. At any time, if you join our um, if you join our hangout, um, keep in mind there might be a slight delay um, based on the time that it's taken you to join. So it's 7.33 now. If you are just joining us, then you might be three minutes behind um, as we started at right at 7.30. So I um, hope that makes sense to everyone. Um, there are just a couple different ways that you could post your questions. We encourage you to send your questions in to us. Um, the first way, and you're looking at my screen right now, um, allows you to post your, we, we're asking that you can, you can go to the Google Plus page for Bridging Apps and post your questions right there, um, right where it shows the links and um, there was the trailer that we just watched. You can go ahead and post a question there. Um, and another way, you can go to our Bridging Apps Facebook page. Or um, if you are not into Facebook, not into social media, and you'd rather just, just use the email, you can email us at bridgingapps at eastersealshouston.org. Um, and then Betsy, uh, she's actually on right now, just getting our screens ready to start our live Q&A in just a moment. Um, but she'll be here to answer them. One other way, and it's kind of a cool feature of... Um, of um, Google Hangouts is it allows you to go through, and I'm just going to kind of go through and walk through it, it with you. Um, when you click on the, if you go to the Google Hangouts, um, or yes, Google Hangouts homepage, or excuse me, Google Plus page, and the Bridging Apps, um, and you click play like it, like it's about to start or like you're watching us now. A very along the very top of your screen, and I'm trying to show it to you. Um, you'll see nine little squares, three rows, three columns of squares. So if you click on those squares, it's going to give you. And I'm just kind of going through this little video I created. Um, there are two apps that show up. You're you're clicking on the squares, which is actually the apps button. And these are the apps that we've enabled for the Hangout. So if you click Q&A, 
it's going to give you a box that allows you, it, it'll give you a panel, actually a window that pops up. And so this is an example of a question that I submitted. Um, you can su submit questions at any time during this Hangout. Um, so this is one that I submitted. You'll be able to see what you've submitted. Um, in order to submit a question, if you scroll down to the very bottom in the green box, you can say, ask a new question. Um, and that comes to us right away. We'll be looking at those questions that, as they're coming in. So without anything else, I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. And um, give me a second to come back. And... Okay, so um, hi everyone, and I am. I think we've got Betsy on. We also have Julie Smith on. Um, Betsy is here local, um, locally, and she's had some great adventures this past couple week. <laughs> we with past couple past week, I guess, with our flooding in Houston. Um, Julie Smith has joined us, um, and she is in um, Austin. And so, and we'll just go ahead and, and mute our mics. Let's go with, um, it looks like we've got four viewers um, that are out there right now, and I know more people will be joining us. Um, so, Betsy, let's just go with, um, I guess, the, the bottom question, if you're looking at that um, Q&A screen. So, this is a question for, that came over to from email. Um, but Betsy, do you want do you want to just introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Betsy Furler, and I am a speech pathologist, an app um, lover of every every type of app. I started working with mobile devices when the iPad first came out, and I have learned a lot about apps and a lot about using apps in the classroom as well as at home for educational purposes. I also, besides being a speech pathologist, I have a multi-level special ed teaching certificate. Okay, great. Thank you, Betsy. Okay, let's start off with, um, with one of our questions. It came over from email, um, and it just says, what do you consider to be the must-have accessibility features in apps? Um, there are a few things that I thought of kind of I'm kind of thinking of off the top of my head as some things that are really important for accessibility. One of the most important things about accessibility of an app is just to make a good, high quality app. Most apps that are good quality educational apps are going to be good for kids with special needs as well as kids who are typically developing. Um, some other things that I think are really important is to make it a really intuitive interface and so that the kids can access the app themselves without having to do a lot of reading or without having to follow a lot of auditory directions because frequently kids with special needs have a lot of trouble with um, their reading skills as, as well as their auditory comprehension. So making something that's easy for them to follow along with and easy to learn without a lot, having to follow a lot of directions is really important. Um, it's also really important to have a choice of access methods. Some kids may be able to, for instance, tilt a screen back and forth, and that's a fun gaming type way to access an app. But other kids have a lot of trouble with that and may need to touch and drag um, across the device. And then language, having a choice of different languages is great for accessibility for people who speak different languages. Um, so it's really helpful when a app does have okay, the ability to great. change language. Thank you. And we are getting more... Oh. Okay, sorry. I think where there was a delay in, um, in some of our maybe internet speeds and, and the audio coming through. So thank you, Betsy. That was great. Um, we are getting some more questions as they're coming through, so I'll just go ahead and, and moderate, and um, we'll jump to the next one. Um, 
So this one is another that came through email, and um, then we've got a viewer that she started using that Q&A feature. Yay! So we'll, we'll get to those um, next. So apps for teaching quantity at a beginning level. So Betsy, what are some ways that you would teach quantity? So beginning. I'm going I'm to um, try to show an app um, that I love. It's called Toto Math. So I'm going to try to do a screen share. Get my iPad over here. So this is called Toto Math, and it um, has many, many great uh, um, games for learning math concepts, but some of my favorite ones, one of my very favorite ones is this one that's called Number Tracing. And the reason I really like it is because it has this one-to-one -one correspondence over on the side. I just tapped this, the ball and it gave me the number one. And then the tracing feature as well. So you get the idea that these, these two balls means two. So I really like um, that game in particular, but there are many others. For instance, there's the Tally Game, which is, a, is also a great early game where you learn how to make different numbers using um, different combinations of numbers. So Toto Math, I could go on probably for the whole time about Toto Math, but that's one of my very favorites. I also um, love an app called Hungry Guppy. I'm just going to pull it up really quick. Um, Motion Math is a developer that has a lot of different math games at all sorts of different levels. And Hungry Guppy is kind of the entry level. And you have to feed your fish. Hopefully it's going to open on my iPad. Um, but you feed your fish and you can start with just um, feeding them um, individual um, bubbles and then you can combine them together. So you see one and one together makes two. And this fish has two on it and you want a quantity of two to feed to the fish. So those are a couple of my very favorite, very kind of early beginning math apps. I'm going to stop my screen share for a second. Oops. Okay. Am I on? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay, so um, we have some great questions coming in um, from one of our viewers. Um, and she's asked um, for some new app suggestions that are more age appropriate to help with apraxia and pronunciation and speech, etc. She's used our Q&A feature as well, so yay. Um, so let me, I'm going to look and see <laughs> if I have to show. Probably my favorite articulation app is um, Articulation Station. And I do have it here, so I'm going to show my screen again. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to make my iPad bigger. I'm here. Right, Betsy, as you're sharing that, I'll okay. get started. I used it last. Um, it's similar to articulation cards um, that we've all used in the past, but um, just really nice interface and nice, nice clear pictures and a clear voice. I don't know if you can hear, but. You can also, the child can record their own voice and listen back to it. And I really, I really like that feature I use um, yeah. of this app. Similar to articulation cards um, that we've all used in the past, but um, just really nice interface and 
nice, nice, clear picture. Okay. I just heard myself saying that again. Um, another app that I really like to use for any type of speech practice is Photo Buttons. And this app is really nice because you can um, customize it completely yourself. In fact, I want to go back and select a different background. Um, you just tap the screen and these buttons pop up. And then when you touch the buttons again, they turn over and they give you a vocabulary word. There are pre-programmed buttons, but you can also make custom buttons. So what I like to do if I'm working on a certain sound or a certain phonological process, I will make custom buttons based on what that child needs to work on. Um, so those are probably my two um, favorite speech apps that I use the most. And then I use traditional therapy methods along with those apps um, to work on the goals that are appropriate for the child. Okay. Great, great, Betsy. I'm, I'm actually going to, um, so let me just interject as people are, are adding questions to the Q&A there's another app that we've enabled for this and that is the showcase and that is they look like little yellow price tags so when you click on that your right hand of your screen as you're viewing you'll be able to see things that we've added in the showcase at this point we only have a couple of links in that showcase but Betsy if I can get you to tell me the names of those apps again I'm gonna add um, the links um, with some information about these apps that you're suggesting um, okay. so that people can go back and, and find them. So um, tell me articul those you're talking about. Articulation Station. Okay. All right. And Photo Buttons. Photo Buttons. I was thinking I saw Photo Buttons. Okay. All right. So we are to our next question. And... Um, this, uh, let's see, I have two sons with autism. One of the two also has severe, oh, I just shared that, so, oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's very similar. One of the two also has severe apraxia and a genetic syndrome. They, ha they have both, you both used iPads since age two and three. Most of our apps um, are geared towards preschool. They are now seven and eight and have outgrown many of the apps. I need more, so. That is okay. Yeah. So that's um, I would definitely um, recommend working with um, Toto Math that I showed earlier. It's a great app for kids that are um, working academically or developmentally between kind of the pre-K level up through second grade. So it's a good wide range, and it's got, they have, um, on Toto Math, there's some great math games, but also some of the games that combine language skills along with math. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, some of the other, another um, reading app that I like is called Reading Train. And I'm going to try to pull it up. Now I'll try to share my screen. There's the reading train. Um, I think it's kind of going in a little bit in and out, or it is on my end at least. Um, there are lots of different storybooks, different levels. Um, it's a very, very complete app with um, easy-to-read books with very nice, clear graphics. You can either listen or read, or you can also record yourself reading the book. And you can. You also get to earn. Um, some rewards and listen to some cute songs that they've made. So as you can see, this one has a lot of repetitive language. And as you go through it, I can't make it go, but 
as you go through it, then at the end you can have, you can go through the vocabulary. So that one's called Reading Train. Um, another app that I really like for that age group is, I don't know, Um, Word Thief for kids who are kind of at that second grade reading level. Um, and I may not have it on this iPad. Don't think I have it on this iPad. Um, but Word Thief is a really cute app that is more game like but still works a lot on um, reading and spelling kind of at that second grade level. Um, also, all the endless apps. Endless ABC is one of them. One thing I really like about um, Endless Alphabet or Endless ABC is that it is a simple concept of matching letters, but the vocabulary is at a much higher level. So it's great for kids of all ages um, who need to work on letter identification and letter matching. So it also has the sound of the word as you pull it in. And then after you match all the letters, it talks about the word, it gives a definition of the word, and it um, says the word in a sentence. So that one is Endless ABC. There's also Endless Reader um, and Endless 1, 2, 3. Harvest. To harvest is to gather something that grows in nature, like plants or... So those are the endless apps. So those are kind of um, a, a few of them that I really, really like um, kind of for that age group. Okay, thank you. And I have to interject. Um, I... Um, I know each one of us work with students and work with um, teachers and, and caregivers that are looking for apps. Um, in my years as teach in teaching, um, I unfortunately didn't use the iPad as much because um, I didn't. Ha it wasn't around when I was when I taught for years and years. But I tutor now, and I have to say that endless the endless series of apps have been wonderful. The students from all different ranges love them. I have one that um, he is autistic, and he just that thrives off of that one, loves it. Um, so thank you. I'm so glad you're sharing this, these, these great apps. Um, and I am starting to get them into the showcase. So um, some of them have been, some of these apps have been reviewed um, on our website. And some, would you say, Betsy, some of these have not as well? Correct. Okay. So just we to can't keep up with all the good apps. <laughs> it's really hard. We're trying. Um, and our website is just um, undergoing some changes, and so we're, we're really excited to, to share some of the, the newer search features there. Um, so to make it simple, I have just included the iTunes um, download link. Some of these are also available on Android. So um, this will at least get you there to the name of the app. So if you click on Showcase, just like you got to the Q&A, you, you'll be able to see some of these apps that Betsy's talking about. Okay, we're going to jump to our next question, um, and I marked that one as done, so thank you um, to the person that sent that question in. Um, oh, here's a good one. Um, question from an email, what is the Good Preschool Assessment app? Good Preschool Assessment app. The overall um, preschool assessment app that I like is called the Common Core Early Language Screener. I'll pull my I'll pull my iPad over here without making it gigantic. Um, so so this this assessment tool is kind of a um, kind of a kindergarten readiness screener. Um, but I, it's really easy to use, and it kind of it just gives you a good um, basic understanding of what the child what the child knows. I'm gonna try to go into oops, 
you can see also I'll show you this real quick it does generate a report um, after you give the the screening which is nice um, but I'm not going to go into it because it's going to take too much time but it the, it presents some of the items for the child to point to or label and then it also um, cues the person who's giving the the screener that you know what to ask the child and how to how to score it so it's all a one you know one stop shop as far as doing the assessments um, so that's that's my my favorite of the preschool kind of assessment screener tools that are on the iPad Okay, is my screen sharing gone? Yes, there screen sharing. Okay, so uh, let's move to another question. All right. Um, all right, we have several. This is great, exciting. People out there want to know some great apps. Um, okay, so I'm looking for an app for an adult who has had a right brain stroke and is struggling with aphasia. Are there any apps to help him make gains towards his goal of improving his communication? And are there any good apps to help him actually communicate? Um, I, so let me try to pull my iPad over. Oops. I've got a screen share first. Hold on. <laughs> okay, can you see my can you see my screen? Oops. Not yet. Okay, let me go back. Yes, now we can. Okay, so this app is called Proloquo for Text. Other uh, people who have heard me talk before know that I love Proloquo to Go, um, which is a more of an icon-based core word augmentative communication app. Proloquo for Text is great for adults, um, especially adults are a different situation with augmentative communication because with kids they frequently haven't had a language system or a communication system that worked for them in the past versus an adult who's had a stroke or a head injury or another uh, maybe a, a degenerative neurological or physical disease that has caused them to be unable to speak so they have the history of a language expressive language and communication system so sometimes they do really well with text rather than icons. So Proloquo for text is an app that allows you to use um, text to speech, but you can store conversations. Um, it also has um, word prediction as well as sentence prediction. So it's frequently, um, I don't know if you can see, there we go. Um, I right now I'm just using to the the word prediction and sentence prediction to type out a sentence and it's delayed um, on the screen so it's hard to see word prediction that's above the keyboard to make it faster for me to type out the sentence and then um, it will speak for you. Dog is in the house. I am going to the store. There are also some quick talks over here on the side where can you can you help me? Um, just program in some things that. Please be patient while I rest. Um, so it gives you just some quick talk to. The other one of the greatest things about this app is if you have multiple um, keyboards stored are loaded onto your iPad, <coughs> excuse me, when you change your keyboard 
language. So if you were bilingual and spoke English and Spanish, if you change your keyboard to the Spanish keyboard, your Proloquo for text would immediately change to Spanish as well um, with a different voice and everything. So it's a really um, full-featured, great app to use, um, especially for adults. Um, there are some other, there, there are many, many um, AAC apps or augmentative communication apps that are really good um, for all ages. That one is probably my favorite text-to-speech app. But there are also some things like, this is Flipwriter, and it's just to type back and forth to people. Um, as you can see, it has the word prediction as well. And as you type in, it um, is shows the words the other direction so the person across the iPad from you can see it. So you can type back and forth. Um, so that one is a little bit different and um, a little bit um, you know, easy to use when you're doing back and forth. Handy Speech is another app um, that has a great story. It was developed by a child for his sister who had autism and the unique thing about handy speech is that it sorry I'm having problems getting it to come up mm. Okay, so with this app, you can write, you can use your handwriting to, for your communication. So I write my name, and then I'm going to hit speak. Betsy. And it will speak my name. So this one is great for someone who wants to use their handwriting rather than typing to communicate. So those are a couple of the augmentative communication apps that I think are great um, for the adult population. Okay, Betsy. Okay, so I just added some more of those. I added Perla Cruel for text. Um, I just added Handy Speech. And then, um, what did you say Flipwriter was the other one that turns Flip around the handwriting? Yeah. Flipwriter. Okay. Flipwriter. Okay. I will search for that one and add that one. Um, let's jump to another question out there. Um, and just a reminder, if you're joining us, it looks like we've had a couple ex couple new people join us. If you have questions for Betsy, I'm just going to tell you, um, just, just rather than show you, I'm going to tell you. I know as a teacher we love to be shown things, and all students love that as well. But um, if you will, if you are viewing this through Google Hangouts or Google Plus, um, and you press the play button and you're watching us on the Google Plus page, there are about nine little squares, um, and those are the Google apps that we've enabled. So when you click those little nine boxes um, in the top right-hand corner of that window, you will see two buttons. It says Q&A, and it says um, Showcase. So Showcase is where I'm adding the links to these um, apps that Betsy's talking about, and um, Q&A is how you is a great way for you to submit these questions as you're as you're having them. So we've been having new new questions come in, um, and I'm going to go to the next one. So this is a question um, for uh, for an email, and it says I have a client who is looking for an app where if there is a pre-written story with blanks. The student chooses from a row of visuals at the top to fill in the blanks. Then the story is read to her. Is there anything like that, Betsy? And um, I just want to tell you, this is hard to be able to come up with something just like that. It's like you're really on your feet because we're getting these questions come in quickly. So that tells you um, you're on the hot seat, Betsy. Yeah, <laughs> doing so awesome. that's what I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but 
I think what we can do is maybe um, put that on our Facebook page, and then I can go, you know, find find an app that hopefully fits fits the bill for that one, and we can post it to the Facebook page. Can Can I interject something? I just I don't know if this is exactly, it's probably not the exact one they're thinking of, but it sounds, with a pre-written story, it makes me think of the Mad Libs app, and I know it's one that's, that we've reviewed on our website. Um, you familiar with that one, Betsy? Kind of like the I couldn't hear the voice went blah, blah, right when you were saying the name of it. What is it? Oh, Mad Libs. Oh, yes. Kind of back, back can, in the day, um, used to write those stories and put the adjectives uh, in and... I don't I mean, know if it has the visuals with it, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't know if that one does or not. So, um, but yeah, that's a great question, and we will definitely put that on the. Uh, we can put that on our Facebook page and see if you've got some people that, that want to share that with us. Yeah, so, yeah, and I'll um, I can I'll research it after after the hangout, and when I'm not on the spot, I can probably think of one. <laughs> see, it's a hot the hot seat. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So here's a question from an email. It says, um, my question is super general, but I'm looking for a handful of good apps for my son that will help him with isolating his pointer finger and also introduce colors, alphabet, and numbers. Um, so I have several for these. Several. Um apps that I love to use for um, kind of what I call beginner users um, who are learning to isolate fing their finger and learning to touch and drag and all of that sort of those sort of kind of prerequisite skills for using the iPad. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, one of them is called Tap Tap Baby. It's one of the older apps. It's been around possibly since the beginning of the iPad. And it's one that I really, really like. It's a really simple interface. Um, it's just really engaging, um, but very simple graphics. So it opens up to this page. And the little monkey does a little peekaboo with you. <laughs> um, and I'm tapping each item and it makes it little, does its little animation. You can also go into this simple um, little screen with animals on it and they make animal sounds. And same thing with the shapes. There's this monkey page that some of the kids I work with are terrified of, but it um, is facial expressions and you can talk about emotions with your child. And then just a little xylophone um, fun game to play. So it's very simple, but it kind of gets the kids engaged with the iPad and using an isolated finger. Um, another one that I love, which is another really old but wonderful app, is Ingeni. This is really an app suite, so it's 12 different games at a variety of levels, and really a great app. It's an expensive app, it's about $20, but it's a really great app to start with because there's so many different games within this one app. Um, one of my favorites is the puzzles, because with the puzzles you really learn to touch and drag on the iPad. Put the puzzle together. So you just touch the piece and then drag it in to where it goes in the puzzle. Cut. It does have a little magnetic quality, so when you get it close, it kind of snaps it right into place. Um, it also has a tracing game on it that's really tracing. great because you, if you lose your spot, Trace if you lift shapes. your finger, it doesn't go away, and so it's not as frustrating as a lot of the tracing and drawing apps are. So you can drag down 
and it'll stay right there instead of popping back up. And then it does a little animation and Trash. says what it is, says what the, the object is. Um, there are 12 app games on here, so like Toto Math, I could talk about that one um, for the entire time. So I will go on to another one, and another one that I really like are the photo buttons, which I already showed, um, talking about articulation and, and, and um, apraxia. Um, another one I like um, is called Toddler Sandbox. And Toddler Sandbox is kind of the next, what I call the next level from um, cause and effect. Because with Toddler Sandbox, you choose your toy, and then you have to drag it all over the screen. And you have to make sure you get the sand off of the entire screen. And then it shows a simple picture and labels what it is. Just like a flashcard, but kids really like wiping all the sand off, and it it gives them a lot of ex lot of experience with touch and drag and kind of takes that cause and effect to the next level because they have to do so much more work to get there. So those are a few of um, apps that I love to use for isolating the finger, cause and effect, and the early touch and drag skills that are really important for kids who are just learning to use the iPad. Man, you are doing awesome, rocking and rolling on this little app. <laughs> um, you've got so many apps in your in your brain. You yeah. probably dream in your sleep. <laughs> so. I do. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, we are getting close to the end. We've got like 15 more minutes of this hot seat, um, and let's see. We don't have anybody really mean trying to stump you, Betsy, so that's good. <laughs> Thank goodness. I know. Okay, so I'm still looking through. Oh, I'm going to say that we, we're done answering that question. We're done answering this question. Oh, do, 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 do. kind of narrowing down our list. Okay, so here's one. Uh, this is a question from an email. In the world of AAC apps, how would you determine which one to use for a young child? I feel lost. It, it really, of course, depends on the child, but there are kind of a few um, skills that I look for to kind of decide what I want, what I, how I want to get started with AAC. One is, um, back to the apps we were just talking about, is the child able to understand cause and effect? And are they able to isolate a finger? Um, and are they able to touch and drag and or scroll through a, um, a screen on the iPad or on a device? So um, I kind of look at those, and none of those are prerequisites that you have to have to start AAC. They kind of just give me an idea of what to start with. So um, frequently what I'll start with is um, something like the sounding board app just to get oh, just to get an idea of especially for a very young child of if if AAC is going to work right now and it's a free app so there's no cost involved um, if I can get it over here so y'all can see them a little better. Um, sounding board is from AbleNet and it comes with some preloaded boards but I really like the fact that you can make your own boards and you can even do a single button board um, or two buttons. So um, when I was doing an assessment on somebody recently I put these two together. This is a toy um, that we had that the child really liked and then we had the chair, a picture of the chair to spin in. So they were able to touch. Spin, please. Toy, please. And make a choice from that. So um, frequently I'll start with something like that. Um, I also, of course, um, love Perlo Quota Go. And I also like scene-based apps such as Scene Speak. 
which um, for some reason is not loaded on this iPad, but SceneSpeak is a great app because you can load, look at a picture, um, and develop hotspots within the picture so the child can talk about that picture. Um, I can show you how I kind of like with Proloquo, I'm going to show Proloquo, but this works actually with any of the, the core word apps that are customizable of Oz. Um, you're able to do this with a Oz and a lot of the other apps. What I like to do is I like to really um, cut down the number of buttons on the screen to really get a good idea of whether or not um, the child can can work with this and to make sure it's not too hard for them. Um, I'm looking for a really um, cut down user. This is the full user in Proloquo, so as you can see it's really complicated at first. It has a lot of vocabulary, which is great, but you kind of want to start with something like this so you can do I want. want and then iPhone. I want iPhone. You can even start with just this screen. So you just have the, you know, you can start with two or four or six or five. Um, and then you can develop into more folders so they have more and more vocabulary available. So um, I'm going to go back because now I can't remember exactly what the question was. Oh. How would you determine which one is to use with a young child? I would definitely say that um, you you really need a full AAC assessment done by a speech pathologist who is um, very familiar with augmentative communication. But that kind of gives you an idea of kind of how I get started with the process. Okay, um, Betsy, you have to remind me, did we answer, because I didn't check it off, um, that's this great little handy list in the Q&A, we can check it off as we go, um, for those of us that, that like to check things off on the list, kind of keep us on track, um, there was a question, it said, new app suggestions that are more age appropriate to help with apraxia and pronunciation of speech. I know we talked so, about several things yes, dealing yes. with apraxia, okay, yeah, I kind of thought we did, so. Uh -huh. Okay, um, all right, so this is one, and I don't know if you've had time to kind of think because you are you haven't gotten off of that hot seat um, uh -huh. yet, but it is a question that came in on our Q&A uh, looking for a reminder app of for a young user, um, easy for them to add tasks and gives them an alarm remind, reminder. And um, again, this is something that we could add to our Facebook kind of search and we can continue to look if we can't find it now but um, I, I will show I can't I can't think I, I can't off the top of my head think of one that totally fits that question answers that question but um, first and visual schedule is a, a really good app Oops, sorry I'm having trouble sharing my screen now because I my little iPad icon keeps getting in the way um, so first then visual schedule is just a really nice app. It's it's not, I don't think, exactly what this person is looking for. Um, but it kind of gives you know kind of the same idea where we're looking at this visual schedule and you can go through and go through each step so you can develop schedules for the kids. And then you can check them off as you go. Oops, hold on. Well, for some reason I'm in edit mode and I cannot get out of it. Ah, there we go. Ah, okay. Well, I can't get out of edit mode, but on first and visual schedule, you can go through and make lists for your child and they can check them off as they go. Um, what it, I don't believe it does is kind of that reminder alarm idea. I usually recommend the reminder app that is built into the iPad. And it's a, it's a pretty simple interface, but it is not really designed for children. 
So you do have to be able to, to type and spell and read um, for the most part. But it does, it is nice because you can set an alarm and you can also even set a location alarm. So for instance, um, you can put in don't, you know, don't forget my lunch. And then if you leave your house, your iPad or your phone will remind you, will, it will send you a reminder, oh, you're leaving your house, don't forget your lunch. So it's a, it's a good one. Um, but I don't think it's exactly what that, um, what our question is asking for. So that's another one we'll put on the Facebook page. I'll do a little research after the Hangout and um, find one that fits the bill more exactly. Okay, so um, I'm going to select that one saying that we answered it, and, and you that was great. Um, and I will say that was a reminder, setting reminders on your phone. I've gotten so much better about that. Um, and just this past weekend, I'm a storyteller, so I always think of stories as people are telling me things, and it, remi and it reminds me, it pops up things. When you mentioned about, you know, having the ability to read and that kind of thing, um, I was shocked. I actually um, was at one part of the hotel room, wasn't very big, obviously, but I could hear my kids. They were in the YouTube Kids app, and I know we haven't talked about streaming or anything like that, but I've noted, I know I could hear them talking into their iPads. They're using Siri to search <laughs> for particular things that they wanted to watch on YouTube Kids, and I was just glad that they've been trained and they were following my instructions of sticking with YouTube Kids because uh, it's filtered. But, you know, as, when it comes to, like, adapting apps and making them work for you and putting something in reminders, Siri works great. And it's, yeah, that's true. Good thought, Tara. <laughs> What was that? I Did said very good thought. That is true. You could use Siri and not have to type into it. Yeah. Well, and I never thought I never I've never taught my kids how to use Siri, um, but they watch their mama, <laughs> so <laughs> and they picked up what that little microphone does. I was shocked by it. And when I say my kids were using it, I've got an eight year old. She was using it. Um, I have a five and a half year old and a four and a half year old. The four and a half year old was using it. I could not believe it. I was like, what are you doing? Um, and I figured it out. She was looking for her Barbie shows on U Kids YouTube. Okay, wow. so <laughs> we are getting close to our time and um, as far as questions go, I've got one last one that I submitted last night. Um, and so the next time we do this, you can, just food for thought, you can put those Q&A questions in beforehand. Um, that always helps us. Wouldn't you agree, Betsy, to know those questions? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of takes you off the hot seat a little bit. Not quite so steamy. Um, so one of my questions that I put in last night was, Betsy, if you could only pick two apps, two on your whole iPad, which I know you have, what size iPad do you have, by the way? Because you have a lot of apps on your iPad. I have two iPads with 128 gig each, and then I have another one with 32. So yeah, so you, you're well. I have, to, well I have to switch them out because I can't keep all my apps on one. And that's that's what happens. Um, so this is a hard question. What are your what are your uh, most used apps? Like your two go to apps. And if you so, need to add a couple more, that's okay. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll be on here. Yeah, yeah. So the so two of the apps that I probably my very two favorites are both. I have to do more than two actually. Um, okay. The first one, hopefully y'all can. Yeah, so as I'm screen sharing, so this is SoundTouch, and I just love this app as a speech pathologist, and it's been around a long time. And now there's a SoundTouch two, and there's a video touch, I think it's called. Um, but I just love it because you can just touch the, you just touch the the icon, so it's cause and effect. Um, you can set it so it has text, so you can work on reading skills. Um, I have it set with only four icons, but you can change it to up to twelve. It's in like twenty different languages, so no matter what language the child needs, you can use it. it would be also great for 
older kids who are learning a second or third language to work on vocabulary. And then down here at the bottom, for older kids, I work on categories. I say, show me where the fire truck would be, and they have to go to the vehicles and find the fire truck. It's not on here because it's in the 12, not the 4. Um, but anyway, Sound Touch is one of my very favorites. And Genie is another one um, that I use almost daily at work, and I already showed that one. Um, and then probably um, if I have to go with you know, only two, and which I'm now going into three. Um, I would say the My Play Home, and I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to say the My Play Home suite of apps. So there are, um, there's My Play Home, My Play Home Stores, and My Play Home School, and it is so fantastic. Um, and it's a virtual dollhouse, and um, I love dolls and I love doll houses, so I just adore this app. You can go inside and it's great. There's no language um, provided by the app, so it really works on expressive language, pretend play. I use it for receptive language games with the kids I work with because I'll you know, tell them what to do, get, get the mom down and take her in the kitchen and cook eggs. You can make your commands um, or the directions you want them to follow really complex or really simple. Um, then they can go um, down the street to the My Play Home Stores app so they work seamlessly together. Um, and more um, fun direction following, pretend play, getting them to talk about what the characters are doing. Um, and then the My Play Home School app is the kids can go to the schoolhouse. And if you change them into their school uniforms when you're in My Play Home, when the, your characters show up in My Play Home school, they'll have their school uniforms on. So that's another one that I that I absolutely love. And then, of course, Proloquo to go, I think everybody knows, is one of my very favorite apps of all times, but not so much a fun app, but a very, very functional app. And I do use it with my clients every day. So those are probably, you know, in a nutshell my favorites, but I have many, many more favorites for different purposes. All right. Well, my goodness, this has been a full hour and we were we were a little bit worried. <laughs> I was a little bit worried thinking, would we get questions? And we did. Um, but um, Betsy, I I have to give props to Betsy. I've only been with Bridging Apps for a while, and I, I love working with each one of the people that are with uh, that work with Bridging Apps because they're so knowledgeable and just um, Betsy. You could tell you know your stuff, and you've got three iPads worth of apps <laughs> ready to share at any given um, time. Uh, as we mentioned, this is our very first Q and A that we um, that we did tonight. Our live Q and A. Uh, we've kind of played around with Hangouts in the past. Um, and we've kind of changed our format um, we, of our virtual, um, I guess we'll call them trainings. Every month we're doing a virtual training. We just released our, um, our virtual training for this month, and I will put that, um, the link to it in the showcase. Um, so uh, Julie Smith, who's on, and Amy Berry, um, and she works out of Florida, uh, and I, we put this together on summer apps and keeping the learning going throughout the summer. So we uh, encourage you to go ahead and check check that out. If you haven't seen our virtual trainings, um, you can kind of tune into our YouTube channel and um, subscribe. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Channel, give us some likes, some comments. Um, we're just trying to really get the word out there of. Um, that we're we're trying to be a little bit over more virtual. We're we're spread out, all of us, and um, we love the fact that we have people coming to us from different locations all over the world. So, thank you for joining us, and we are going to do another one of these live Q and A's in July. You know, in August. Um, so every other month, and I think that um, Julie and Amy Berry are going to be joining us. And they're going to be talking up about early childhood and uh, I think elementary apps. 
it's so um, that should be a great session as well. I'm sure it's going to be power packed. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Do, uh, Betsy, did you want to share any final words? No, you? just thanks everybody for joining us, and it was fun. All right, thank you, and go back to enjoy your evening if you're joining us um, at a different time. If you have some questions, go to our Facebook page and, and post your questions, and we'd love to get back and answer those to you. It is an interactive page um, that we'd love to have your, your questions and give some input and, and just even some comments of what you use. Thank you so much, and you guys have a great night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>